Hey, what is going on guys? This is Eli from Mobox, and this time we are going to create this cute desert scene. We will cover some basic techniques, but I think it will be pretty interesting for most of you. As always, you can download my cleaner and more precise file on our Patreon page. So let's hop in Cinema 4D and get started. So first of all, let's start with the first cactus. There are many ways to create such cactus, but I think the easiest and most flexible workflow for this is doing it with splines. So let's go ahead and create a star spline. And we're going to set the plane direction into XZ so it lays flat on the floor. We are going to play around with the inner and outer radius so we get a different shape because this is still very pointy. So first of all, let's scale this down a bit. Um, I found to be 40 centimeters by 58 centimeters to be a nice shape. So you can just play around or enter the values, but you want something that looks like this. Now we have this star, so let's extrude this with the extrude object and drag the star inside of it. You can see we have a kind of weird shape. That is because the extrusion is going to the side. So let's reset this to zero and just use the center value, which means it is going up. So let's say we will make this pretty large, something like 300 centimeters. And we're also going in the caps options. And let's make this on both sides a fillet cap. Um, something like 30 centimeters will do. And you can see this is making it a bit bigger. So let's go down here and check the constraint option so it doesn't increase its size. We are also going to select the create single object option. That makes it a bit better when doing further adjustments. And we're also going to increase the steps of these fillet caps to just two. It is still a bit rough at the ends, but we want that because the smoothing will happen with the subdivision surface. So with this extrude object selected, hold Alt or Option on the keyboard and click the subdivision surface. That way it will be the parent of this extrusion and you can see it gets smoothed. It doesn't need to be that smooth, so we can just use the subdivision editor and render options at two. Makes it a bit faster. And now maybe one more adjustment we would like to get is making it a bit thicker at the top. So let's use the taper deformer for example. And um, we're going to raise this up and manually replicate the size of this. So maybe let's say 200 by 200. That's close enough. Let's increase the strength of this. So something like minus 30%. And you can also play around with the curvature if you want to. But you can see nothing is happening to the actual cactus. That is because we need to make sure this is grouped together. So select all of this and press Alt and G to group this together in a new null. And I'm already going to call this cactus. And you can also notice the deformer is being applied by this. Okay, so that's the first part. Now we would like to have some arms at the sides here, like a typical cartoon cactus. So let's click on this spline pen tool. And we're going in the front view. That makes it a bit more clean when drawing stuff. Let's start somewhere close to the center. And just make an L shape like this. Make sure you deselect the spline. So click somewhere down here. And we're going to create a second arm. Maybe a bit lower and a bit smaller. Like this. Hit escape to cancel the last point. So we can end the drawing. Now if we go back in the perspective mode, you can see it is perfectly centered to this cactus. So that's why I wanted to do it in the front view. Now we will have to replicate this shape on these splines. There are multiple ways to do this again, but I think the sweep object is the easiest option. So let's create a sweep object. We are going to duplicate this star, so hold Ctrl or Command to make a duplicate while dragging it. And we're going to enter this star and spline inside of the sweep object. And you can see something is happening, but the star is still set to the XZ plane. So let's try some different options. And you can notice XY is the correct one. So the star is a bit too big, so let's just scale this down. And we also need to set the cap options on the sweep object. So let's just go for the end one. I think it's that one. Fill out cap. And we're also going to constrain this again and create a single object. And it can go in two steps. And let's make it a bit bigger. But make sure you don't overdo it because it will go back to the other side. So stay under that, like this. We're also going to put this inside of a subdivision surface again. It makes it a bit smoother. And if you don't like this curve, you could go in the spline here. And let's go in the point mode. And somewhere 
at the bottom here there should be a point so maybe you need to set the radius a bit bigger so you can find it and right click chamfer and click and drag to make the curve exactly like you want it to okay so that's a nice first arm I'm going to duplicate just this subdivision surface and I'm just going to delete this spline and drag the second one we just created under here so that's easy what you could also do is creating a new null for example with the subdivision surface inside of it which is the arm and we're going to duplicate that taper deformer inside of there too we need to adjust the scaling and the position of course but that way you could have a more top heavy arm like this so that's up to you if you want to do that or you just like the original look one more thing I think could be useful for you is to hide the taper deformers just in the viewport so double click this top dot until it goes red okay so let's just name this we're going to group all of this together in a new null just to keep a bit of overview now we would like to have some pins of this of course so let's create these pins which are basically cones so let's raise this up to see how this could look and go in the object mode I think the size of this can be pretty small so let's go with something like just six centimeters on the bottom radius and it also doesn't have to be that long so um, let's go with something like 30 I think that could look nice so now we want many of these on the whole thing uh, we will have to do this in separate steps so we can do that with a cloner object let's drag the cone inside of the cloner and we will need multiple cloners for this so one cloner for every part of the cactus so three in this case I'm just going to place this above the body parts just to keep it clear visually in the hierarchy um, we are going to change the mode of this cloner to object and inside of this body group we will find the subdivision surface so drag the subdivision surface inside of the object field of the cloner you can see we have multiple clones but they are being aligned to the object so disable align clone now they're pointing up like we created it originally but we want it to be rotated so let's go with minus 90 degrees I think or actually we can keep the align clone option that's why it is not working so if you use minus 90 degrees in the transform tab on the p value it should be like you want it to let's increase the clones of this to something like let's say 60 and you can also play around with the seed values it's totally up to you I think this looks okay now we want the same thing to happen on the other parts so let's duplicate this in between here and we're going to open the subdivision surface as well so select the cloner drag the subdivision surface in here so that works but maybe we want a bit less of these so I think something close to 20 25 is just enough and let's do a last one where we also change the object and there we go so that's a lot of parts for just one cactus but this one is finished maybe it's a good time to set up some basic lighting and basic materials so we can move on a bit faster in the end and it's just a bit easier to see the differences so the first thing I would like to do is creating a basic lighting setup for this kind of cartoony style it's kind of the same as I usually do it in other videos so let's go over this quickly first of all we need the physical sky which only comes with the studio version of Cinema 4D I guess so if you don't have it you have a broadcast version for example I just recommend getting the studio version actually <laughs> so let's set the time to something like 2 p.m. we are also going to create a new light object and go down here to set the ambient illumination option that makes it a bit brighter and the shadows less hard I'm also going to create a floor for just now to get some shadows let's go in the render settings and add an effect which will be the ambient occlusion and for now I think that should be it for just the lighting so let's render and see how this looks for now okay so that looks nice enough in terms of lighting but it is still very gray so let's create some first materials so the first material will be for the cactus of course you can use anything you like again but I'm going with a very bright green so that's just the color it's up to you but what I would like to do is making some changes in the reflectance tab so down here all I want to do is increasing the width of this that makes it a bit more visible um, one more thing I would like to do in this reflectance tab 
Let's go into the color here. Because it is set to white by default, which is kind of boring, we can make this pop even more if we adjust the colors depending on the actual color of the material. So in this case we don't want white, but very light green. Okay, let's drag this on the different parts of the cactus. Now we need one more material for the pins. So let's create a new one. This will be a darker color. And under the reflectance channel we can actually use the same color. So I can go in the other one. Right click on this, copy it, go back here and paste it. Um, we are also going to change some of these values again. So in this case I don't want the width to be that big because it's a very sharp shape. But I'm also going to increase the strength of this to something like 80% for example. And maybe also the width to something like 50. It makes it a bit stronger and a bit more plastic even. So let's drag this on all of these cloners. It looks a bit strong right now because everything around it is grey, but it will look just fine in the end, so don't worry. Okay, so I'm going to group this together and put it at the bottom. Great, let's continue with the second cactus. From here on it will be easier because we can use parts of the previous ones. So what I'm going to do is make a small variation on the previous one. So all I need is this center body part. Let's duplicate it outside of the group. I'm going to make this extrusion a lot smaller, something like 110 centimeters. Let's also move this a bit to the back so we can see it. I think that looks nice. Let's also adjust the taper deformer, move it down a bit. And of course we need the cloner of this as well. So um, it's here. But it's inside of the same group as the taper deformer, which we don't want. So let's move it outside of it. And we're going to make sure the subdivision surface is being set to it again. So it sticks to the object. Let's group both of these parts together again. And I'm going to call this Cactus 2. Let's create a new material for the Cactus 2. But I'm just going to duplicate the original one. So we have the reflectance channel uh, being the same. So all we need to do now is adjust the color of this. It's totally up to you again. But I just want something more green to blue. So less at the yellow spectrum, but more at the blue spectrum. Let's drag this on the object. Like this. And I think that's a nice variation and a nice color combination. Okay, so let's move on to the third one, which will be quite an easy variation of this one. So before we do that, you can notice that this cloner, its axis is set to the center of this. While the body is being set at a different position. So if we have this group of the cactus, you can see the axis is not centered to the object. Which is not nice if we have many of these, because it will not be very precise. So let's adjust this by going in here and maybe we can just select this body one and reset the position to zero. Like this. And we're also going to center this cloner object, so press Shift and C with the cloner selected. And type in center to parent like this. So now you can see the axis is centered and everything is being aligned. So now you can move this null at the center of the object. Now we can make a duplicate of this part and we are going to make two more of these but towards the top. So just stack it on top of each other and you're going to rotate some of these a bit and um, what you could also do is going in some of these and adjusting the taper deformer to get a bit more variation. And of course, let's group all of this together as Cactus 3. We're going to create a new material for this again, so let's duplicate the other one. And let's make some very small adjustments to the color. Okay, let's continue with the last one, which will be a bit more difficult to make because there are multiple steps to this. So first of all, we want a copy of the original one again. So maybe let's just use Cactus 2 because that's the simplest one. I'm going to copy this and paste this. Let's call this Cactus 4. Under the body we want an extrusion which will be quite large actually. So something like this even. We can also adjust the taper deformer again. Or actually let's delete the taper deformer because we don't need it in the end. You will see why in just a minute. Let's also move this to the back again. So for this one I recommend making the star a bit smaller. So we have a thin cactus part. And now we are going to use the pen deformer. Drag it inside of the body group. And we want it to be centered to the parent again, so to the null. That way we are sure it is centered to this cactus as well. 
So let's manually adjust the size of this. So we had the star, which is about 30 centimeters. So let's make this uh, 40 centimeters. And we're also going to make this a bit taller. So it covers the whole thing. So now we have this yellow dot at the top. You can use this to drag this around and create different variations. You can also notice this top right here. I don't like it, so we have to go to the caps options of the extrusion. And let's make this a bit smaller, something like 10 centimeters even. Or maybe 20. Yeah, that works just fine. So now the whole concept of this is to create multiple copies of this and make it different lengths and different bends. So I'm just going to speed it up because it is just randomly placing stuff. Okay, so this may not be the most perfect one. Um, I just did a quick one to save some time, but let's continue with just this. So when you did this, make sure you select all of these parts and group them together again. Maybe you also want to change the color, that's up to you. But I'm just going to keep it this way, it's easy enough to change this. So now we're done with the cactus parts. We're just going to continue by adding some simple shapes to this. The first one can be a rock shape. It's kind of similar to the first tutorial I did on this channel. So we just get a platonic object and create two segments on this. Let's make it editable. And in the point mode, go right click and pick the brush. And now you could just drag on top of it and drag the shape like you wanted to, to get a rock shape. It's just very random, but as always I recommend not overdoing it because it will get very sharp. If you think it is a bit too sharp, you can press Shift and C again to search for any command. And let's type in smooth. We want this first one with the iron icon. And now you can use the middle mouse button to increase the size or do it right here. And just drag over it to smooth this out. You can also decrease the pressure or the strength of this, so it isn't as drastic, but it is a perfect way to get rid of sharp points at the ends. Okay, so we have a bit of a funky shading on this, and it is not really a low poly look, so let's delete this fong tag on this platonic object. That makes it a bit more sharp again. So that looks nice. Let's create the material for this straight away. It's kind of simple, so let's use some kind of grey with a hint of blue in it again. And under the reflectance channel, we are also going to change the color of the specular to a bit more of a blue tone. Let's drag it on top of there. Now I want one more part for the rocks around this, which will be totally different. So what we are going to create is a cylinder object. Let's move it to the side here. It can be quite large actually. So let's go with something like maybe 500 centimeters. And also 500 on this side maybe. Or that's too much. Let's go with half of that. And we're going to decrease the rotation segments to just seven of these. So that's a bit more of an interesting shape, not too perfect. Um, let's make this editable by pressing C on the keyboard. Let's go in the point mode and hit U and O to optimize. Or you can also right click and optimize right here. That makes sure that these points at the edges are connected to the outer part of the cylinder. Now we can go in the polygon mode and select these top polygons with the selection tool and just rotate this. So we have an angled top. So now we can make duplicates of this and just randomly position them next to each other. I recommend using different sizes and just placing them close to each other. Make some variations in height. Something like this could do. It's totally up to you again how you make this layout of this. But let's go ahead and create a new material for this again. For this I would like to use a more of a brown color. What I'm also going to do um, is going in the diffusion channel and to, so make sure that's enabled and we're going to add a texture to this which will be a Fresnel. Let's go inside of that and we want this gradient at the end to not be black but let's go with just something like 50% grey. I'm also going to add some displacement on this maybe to give it a bit more of texture. So. Let's go in here and go to surfaces and maybe use marble. Let's make this a little less strong, so two centimeters. Make sure you check sub polygon displacement so it can actually show these small details instead of just very big movements. So let's drag this on top of there and see how this looks. Maybe we can also group all of this together, of course. Okay, so that looks nice. We have the little detail on top of this, so it's not as flat looking. 
Okay, so we are done with building the parts for the scene. Now we need something to put them on. So we have this gray floor, but that's just a flat, ugly floor. We are going to delete this even. And we are going to replace this with a landscape. There are multiple ways to create a landscape, of course. But for this one, I want a lot of control. So let's use a plane object. I'm going to make this a lot larger because it's just as big as the cactus. Let's go with something like 14,000 centimeters on every side. So that's quite large. Let's also increase the width and height segments of this because 20 is not enough for such a big plane. And I'm also going to place this inside of a subdivision surface already. So everything I will adjust will be smoothed. Now the first thing I would like to do is adding some displacement on this so that will get the bumps on the landscape. Let's create this displacer deformer and drag it under the plane object. In here we need to set some kind of shading to this, so the texture that will create the bumps. So let's go to the shading tab and create a noise shader for example. Let's get inside of this. The default noise is a bit blurry and not that nice looking for a landscape. So let's click this arrow to get multiple ones. And we want the stubble one, so we can see it down here. Stubble. That looks nice for our landscape as you can notice. Um, but we need some adjustments on this, because now it's very detailed and very small. So we need a scale of something like even 9000%. So that makes it a lot bigger. And we're also going to adjust some of these settings down here. For example, we want the contrast to be a bit less strong. So we have a bit more of grey instead of blacks. Okay, so in the thumbnail you may not notice a lot, but it is being projected on a large landscape. So let's go back here to the settings of the displacer under the object tab and we need to make this a lot bigger because it's such a large landscape. So let's go with something like 87 centimeters for example. And now you can notice it is being applied. Okay, so that's cool. Let's make some further adjustments because it's a very flat desert right now. I want some hills on this. So we can do that in multiple ways again. But what I like to do for this one is using the spherify deformer. So let's drag this under the plane object as well. You can see the landscape shrunk a lot, but don't worry about that. It depends on where you put the sphere. So first of all, let's go in the settings of Spherify. And let's make the radius a lot bigger again. So 5000 centimeters looks nice. You can see this gives us some kind of hill, but it uh, looks like a huge pimple or even nipple right now. Um, so let's adjust this straight away. For this one, I would like to raise it up a lot. So something like uh, 3000, maybe 800 centimeters to the top. You can see that down here on the Y value. Let's also decrease the strength to 30% so it isn't as drastic. Now I want a different one of this. So let's make a duplicate under the plane object. But this one will be moved to the side a bit. So let's move this something like 5500 centimeters in the Z value. And let's raise this down under the floor, something like minus 4,500 centimeters on the Y value. So this gives us some kind of hilly landscape, but it also shrunk the landscape. So that's a bit of the downfall for this, but that doesn't matter. It's big enough for what we have. I'm also going to create some kind of backdrop, something in the distance we can see. So that can be just a regular landscape object. Um, I'm going to decrease the roughness on this both sides on the furrows. Let's move it to this place. We're also going to increase the size of this. You can use a scale tool for that or just manually enter some values on this. So let's go with 11,000 by just 1,800 and 11,000 again. So that's roughly the same size actually like this. So we have a hill in the back here. We can adjust this later depending on the camera view and you can also play around with the seeds of course like this. Maybe it's a good time to add some materials on this because this material is a bit different uh, than the other ones because it's not that easy to see the different details on the landscape with a lot of light on it. So let's just take a look what happens so you can understand what I mean. For example, we can use some kind of uh, yellowish color, just very soft. Um, I'm going to drag this on the landscape already so you can see what happens. You can already tell um, we don't have a lot of detail. The shadows are not that strong. It's just a bit flat looking and um, I want a bit more detail and depth on this. Otherwise we didn't have to make the displacement in the first place. So what we can do is using the diffusion channel again. So what the diffusion channel is being used for is making the differences in height and depth a bit more obvious on materials. So 
Let's use the Fresnel again on this with actually the same settings as we just did it on the rocks, so 50% grey or something close to that. Let's render again to see how this looks. So now you can see the shadows on this are a lot different and more obvious. And we also have this nice reflection on the top. So let's further adjust this landscape material to get a bit more detail. Maybe we don't want to do it on this material on its own. Let's create a second one actually. So just duplicate it. Let's call this landscape pump. For the color we can stay the same, but we're going to add a texture to this. So let's go down here to surfaces and we're going to use the pavement surface. Let's change the mode because this is very dark to add and we're also going to decrease the mix strength of this to 30%. The diffusion channel can stay the same as we just had. Let's also add a bump to this, which will also be the surface uh, pavement. So now you can see we have these nice lines in the material. One more thing I would like to do now is not having this being applied to the whole thing. So we just want some of these lines on some parts of the landscape. So we can do that with the alpha channel. So that makes it visible or not visible. So kind of masking the material. Let's go in here and create a noise shader. Let's go inside of it and increase the size of this to 1000% because we are working with very large objects. And I'm also going to increase the contrast of this to something like 43%. So we have a bit more black. Black is being hidden, white is being shown. So let's also drag the original material on the landscape in the back. And now we want this material to be applied to this plane as well. So it needs to be the second one, so it's placed on top of that. But right now if you would render this, you can see it is very large in scale. So it gives us very big chunks right here. So let's select this texture tag and go um, down here, where we can set the size of this or the length of this. So let's just go with 5%. So that makes it a lot smaller. You can actually see it repeating right here. But when rendering, it will look a bit better. So now we have a nice sandstone material on the floor as well, but not everywhere. So that's exactly what I wanted. Now we can continue again. Let's make an arrangement of uh, these parts we just created, because now they are just floating around. So you could do this manually, but I like to do this with a cloner, just because that speeds it up. So let's create a first cloner. And we're going to drag all four cactus variations inside of this. Now with this cloner enabled, let's change the mode to object again. Also, you want to change this instance mode to render instance. That makes it a bit more easy on the computer. It renders just the copies instead of looking at every object on its own. So we have this cloner set up and we're going to clone this on an object, which will be the plane. So we need to go inside of the subdivision surface and drag the plane inside of here. Okay, so you can see the cloning is happening, but they're all laying flat. So let's go in the transform tab and we're going to rotate this again on the p-value. So I think minus 90 degrees will be the thing again. Or actually we don't need to rotate this, so let's disable that. And we're just going to fix this with disabling align clone. So that makes it stand up straight. Um, we're also going to make some small adjustments on the height of this, so the y-value. So they're not uh, inside of the ground. Now, for example, we can see these ones are not centered to the ground, they're under it. So that's because the cactus is being aligned to the center of the object for everyone. So um, we have this null of cactus tree. So let's disable the cloner for now so we can take a look at it. And you can see the axis is right here at this center one. You can use this enable axis mode and just lower it to somewhere close to the bottom and disable it. That's very important. And now if we use the cloner again, you can see it's just where it should be. Maybe up too high, but that is fine for just now. One thing I notice is that it is very repetitive. So all these ones are being aligned in the same way. They have the arms at the same sides. So we want a bit of variation on this. So let's make sure we have the cloner selected and go to MoGraph Effector and select the random effector. In here we can go to the parameter tab and we can make some adjustments on this. We don't need some variation on the position because that's already happening. We just want something on the scale. Let's make it uniform so it scales the whole object on its own. Something like uh, minus 0.4. So that's not too drastic. And let's also enable the rotation. And we're just going to make this rotate on the H value 180 degrees so it can rotate around itself. 
Let's also go in the cloner again and get a bit more of clones of these. So let's say 30. Now we are going to do the same thing again. So let's create a new cloner. Or actually you can just copy the one we just had and delete the cactus inside of it. And we're going to place the small rocks inside of this. So that's this one. Let's change the seed of this because otherwise we have a rock at every cactus, which is not uh, what we want. So first of all, we only need something like 11 for this, for example. Let's also go in here and disable this Y value. So it sits at the floor. And one more thing we can do is changing the seed. So it's different. Okay, so that should be fine. Let's make a duplicate of this again and delete the platonic side of this. And we're going to drag the tall rocks inside of it. Let's change the, uh, the count of this again. Maybe something like just seven, for example. And we're also going to change the seed of this, of course. It's up to you again how you arrange this and how you do this. So now it's a good time to set up some camera and see where we want the scene to be rendered. So for example, I think this could be a nice composition. That's good enough for me. So one more thing you can notice is at the top here we have this sky, which I don't like. It's not exactly what I imagined for a desert scene. So let's replace this with an actual sky object. So let's create that right here. We need to create a material for this. So sky. In here we are just going to disable the color and the reflectance and only use the luminous channel. Let's create a texture for this which will be a gradient and go inside of it by clicking the thumbnail. We're going to set the type to 2D V, so that's vertical. And now it's a bit of playing around with the values, but what I found to be nice looking for this scene, or any sky actually, is making this point to be somewhere close to the middle. If you want to see the exact position of this knot, you can see it while hovering above it, or you can just click on this arrow and it will uncollapse all of this. So we want this first knot to be somewhere close to 47%. This one can be white, now we want the second one at somewhere close to 50%. This one will be some kind of light blue. And we want the last one just behind it. Um, so that's somewhere close to 55% or anything like that. And this one will be a bit of a darker blue. And now we need to get rid of this last one. It doesn't need to go back to white. So click on it and delete it. That should be it for this material. So let's drag it on the sky object. And if you don't like the look like it is right now or how the gradient is being applied to this, you can rotate the object to get the horizon like you wanted to. So let's render once again to see how this looks. And in my opinion, this makes it a lot more fresh in the sky. So that fits the scene a bit more. Okay, so we're done for most of this. Um, there is one more thing I would like to add, which is the tumbleweed passing by. So this is kind of the difficult part of this tutorial, but let's do it in a simple way. Um, first of all, I think it's easier to create a new document. So let's create a new one straight away. And we're going to create a polygon object. Let's make this just 10 centimeters on every side. So that's very small. And now we can make this editable and select some of these edges. So I made this 10 centimeters uh, because now we can select this one edge and make a duplicate while holding Ctrl or Command and moving it. And if we hold Shift, we can move in increments of 10 centimeters, which makes it a bit more easy to play around with this. So what I want to do is making a flat part of a tumbleweed. So we want to make some kind of branched off shape, which is flat, as if we can wrap it around a sphere object later on. It's a bit random. It's not something specific you can copy or you can try, but uh, I think that's a bit tedious work. But I'm just going to speed this up uh, after the first branch I made. But let's just go over the basic techniques to get this uh, done. So we have this duplicate and let's move it. Now we can use the scale tool. And maybe it's even safer if we just go in the top view. So we don't scale it and move it on the Y value. We just want it to be flat. So with the scale tool I can scale this down. And let's branch off a new duplicate to the top. And one thing I already want to point out is that we want it to be kind of similar in distances from every side of this square at the center. So we can set up some kind of reference, which can be a circle, for example. And let's make this 150 centimeters. So we are almost getting close to that. Let's make some smaller variations. You also want to scale this down towards the top. So every extrusion, you make it a bit smaller. That makes it look natural. 
Now we're going to make loop cuts on this so you can press K and L on the keyboard and click like this. So we have a new kind of square. And let's go back to the move tool so we can select some of these and just make new extrusions and branch it off. So that's what we are going to do. I'm just going to copy my old one and paste it inside of here just to save some time. Okay, so this is what I made earlier. You can see we have some variations and it is just filled overall so we don't have too many gaps or holes. Now we have this flat polygon but we want this to be some kind of sphere of course. So what we can do is using the wrap deformer which is not used that often I think. So let's drag this under the polygon object. We need to make sure this is being rotated so it uh, is pointing up like this. And we're going to change the wrap mode from cylindrical to spherical like this. You can see we have these empty sides so um, we need to adjust the start and end points at this one. So um, the 180 and 360 are all right but we need to go from minus 90 degrees to 90 degrees. All the other settings are just right by default because we made it 300 by 300 on the polygons. Now it's just a flat polygon so there is no thickness. So we can also fix that by selecting this polygon and going to simulate clot and clicking this clot surface while holding alt or option so it's the parent of this one. Or you can just click it and drag the polygon inside of it. With this clot surface selected let's add some thickness to this which can be something like 3 or 4 centimeters and that gives us this nice thickness which we can also disable so it's not fully molded inside of the mesh. So this is one part. Um, now we can create some duplicates of this to make it some kind of sphere. So let's make a duplicate while rotating it like this. Put it to the top. And now we can just make multiple copies and rotate it and scale it to get a bit of variation. You can also go inside of this and select the wrap and just scale it a bit to get a bit of different variations on these ends so it's not a perfect sphere. Let's also disable the deformers for now, so we can easily see what is going on. So that's how you can do this. You can group this up and copy this to the original scene. Let's go outside of the camera view. And in this, and in this case I think I will need to scale this down a bit. Let's create the last material for this one, which will be kind of brown of course. Because it is a small object you don't need to focus on all the specular stuff, just the color will be enough. And now we want to roll this across the scene. So this is a bit difficult if you want to do it manually. So what I like to do is just make it move along a spline. So we need the spline in the first place. What I find to be a nice spline for this is the cycloid one. So we have one right here. We want the radius of this to be something like 76 centimeters for example. So that's a nice bow. Let's decrease the A value of this. I don't know what it is but to something like 17. So we have a very small curve. Let's set the start angle at just zero is actually enough. It's just where it starts. And the end angle can be increased a lot so it goes further. So we get new bumps every time if we increase this value. I'm going with something like 2600 so we have a lot of bumps. One more thing we need to do to make this smoother when animating this is setting the intermediate points to um, uniform. So that will make it a lot smoother when animating stuff on top of this. So now we can place this roughly where we want the animation to happen. So let's go to the top view and rotate this. So we want it in front of the camera of course. But you want to try to make it start outside of the camera view and also stop outside of the camera view. So let's take a look if this would work. Of course it's up to high right now but you shouldn't worry about it too much. Okay so this should work. You can see it is straight and not projected on the floor, so that's a bit of a problem. We can adjust this by making sure it's almost close to the floor to begin with. An easy way to see a visual reference for this is already aligning the tumbleweed on top of this. So let's right click on the tumbleweed, go to Cinema 4D Tags and Align to Spline. Drag the cycloid inside of this spline path, so that makes it aligned to that. And um, one more thing I would like to do is creating a sweep object of this cycloid, just for reference right now. So we will delete it later. So sweep cycloid inside of it and let's create a circle for example and drag it inside of there too. 
And now we want to scale this circle so it is just a bit bigger than the tumbleweed. So now we have a visual reference how we want to align this spline on the floor. So with the cycloid being selected, we are going to create an FFD deformer. So let's create this while holding Ctrl or Command on the keyboard. That will create it right under here. And let's drag it under the cycloid. And we're going to click Fit to Parent. Let's disable the sweep for now to see how this looks. Okay, so now you can see it is being set up in the same size as the spline. Let's also increase this size on the Z value so we have a bit of thickness to this. Uh, because the spline is flat, but we want to see what's going on. Let's decrease the segments of this to just two, except for uh, just one. I'm not sure which one it will be, so let's try this out. Not this one. So the X value in my case. Let's go with something like 20 points, for example, so we can adjust this. With this FFD deformer selected, and the sweep enabled maybe, we can go in the point mode and uh, use the rectangle selection tool to stay clear and we're going to make sure every bottom part is being aligned to the floor so just select the points and drag it down okay so that should be enough let's drag the cycloid outside of the sweep object and delete the sweep object because we don't need it now you can see how we even moved the ffd deformer now the last thing we need to do is just animate this tumbleweed along the spline. So we need to go to the align to spline tag, go to frame 0, set the first keyframe on the position by clicking this dot. Let's set it to frame 90 and 100% and keyframe again. So you can see this bouncing on top of there. But you could see it is still trying to find the original spline like this. So what we need to do right now is selecting the cycloid and the FFD deformer. Right click and choose current state to object. So it will merge both of these in a new spline. We can delete the old one right now. And let's go to the align to spline tag again and drag the new cycloid inside of this. And now you can see it is being aligned correctly. So now one more last thing we need to do is making sure the tumbleweed is rotating. So let's select the tumbleweed. Make sure this tag is being deselected. And we're just going to frame 0 again, set a keyframe, and go to frame 90, and rotate it something like 700 or anything close to that degrees. I did it quickly so you could see I have some intersections right here, but you can be a bit more precise. I'm just trying to be fast here. One more thing you can do to make some depth of field on this is going to the render settings, set it to physical render. Inside of the physical options you can enable depth of field. You also want the sampling quality to be at medium if you want to render this. Um, in the camera options you can set the physical f-stop to just something like even 0.5 or even lower. Like this. And let's go outside of the camera view. And you want this point right here to be centered to whatever has to be in focus. So that's just right in this case. And let's render one more time to see if this works. And you can notice we have a nice depth of field. So that's all there is to this tutorial. As always, you can download my cleaner and more precise file on our Patreon page. If you created something of your own, we are happy to see it on Instagram or Twitter. Also, I hope you learned something new today and I will see you in the next video.